Welcome to another episode of Analyze This. My name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show is my co-host. Honey, good day. So basically on the show today, we're talking about that transition from your nine to five to your own business. I mean, Nigeria is that place where, I mean, you, you kind of feel that you must have something on the side doing to be able to survive the hard experiences. The harshness of, of the I'm country. I'm telling you, it's just very harsh. You, you just need something on the side, right? But there are a lot of pitfalls, right? There, there are the things you must do. You could even get issues of going to jail, um, lose money. Um, I mean, copyright infrictions. There's so many pitfalls Cry around lots. it, right? A lot of things that you should be very careful about. But I think the first thing we need to start from is, can you even do both? I mean, I, I'm not sure I can, but can you? I mean, I definitely can. I, I, th I mean, I started my business as a side hustle. I was working um, somewhere else and I started it in the weekends and at night. So I think it's really possible to be able to start your business and have a side hustle. Uh -huh. Of course, there are some great ways to do it. And I definitely made a lot of mistakes in my mm. time of transitioning mm. or just overthinking it, I think, sometimes yeah. as well. Like, I agonized over for like six months. Um, I think that <laughs> was just probably too painful. Like, mm -hmm. what are you like with multitasking? I'm terrible. Terrible. Really? Yeah, well, men are not really good at multitasking. I, so I'm I'll not take sure. That. If it's, I, I don't want to generally. Don't want to I don't want men. to speak for the, uh, all the men out there, but I know I'm terrible with multitasking. I, I I've worked with people before, mm. and I find out that every time I'm trying to, because my business is at the back of my mind, I'm thinking about it at night, probably on my bed. Yeah. But I can't find that switch to you know switch off um, the. Uh, job and then switch on my entrepreneurial side mm -hmm. so i basically and the thing is i found myself to be that um entrepreneurial entrepreneur yeah that entrepreneurial staff what you know? yeah Yo, what you know and and it's like i take responsibility when i'm working for someone and when there's failure in the organization i take a lot of beating for it in yeah. myself you know I'm, I'm thinking to myself that was my fault you know the fact that we didn't get that contract was because i didn't give that presentation properly so it's all in me yeah. so for me to also have my own business and, and uh, that's too no, much for you it's too much draw to the line there. i draw the line oh, so right. i i necessarily have to you know cut off and go and do my own thing and uh, that can have its own risk as well yeah, i think course, that you know there are definitely like some do's and, and don'ts don't. in terms of transitioning but i think one of the great things that you touched upon is if you're you know you can still be entrepreneurial within a 95 like exactly. i'm telling you guys a 95 is great you get to learn so much you get to experiment you get to do whatever it is on someone else's on someone else's tab <laughs> so like Same now that i run my own like, business i definitely yeah. miss that mm -hmm. whole safety net yeah. that i had when i was working mm -hmm. on you know somebody else's bill so i think don't automatically discuss and think that oh you need to be an entrepreneur to be in an entrepreneurial uh, role um you can definitely work somewhere and be running your own project or even running a subsidiary or a business within a nine-to-five mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i think if you're going to think about making the leap um, from running your business to side hustle there are definitely some things that you should not do i think the first one is I, don't do it on your company tab like don't use office computer don't, don't ju use just don't use email. company anything so I work in technology and in technology companies, you need to be especially careful. If you're under contract with someone, anything that you come up um, while you're working on that, you know, technology mm -hmm. company's payroll could technically belong to the company. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if this thing grows to become like a billion dollar business. If you do it while on that company's payroll, while on their machine, just thinking the same thing while you're there, yeah. it belongs to them. And it makes sense because sometimes you're exposed to, you know, the, the, some to ideas, ideas yeah, that yeah, might belong you know, to the company. Session. Exactly. And it, it's, it's actually happened to me. Uh, there was a time I was... It happened was, to you? You thought yeah, of something no, that was five billion worth? No, no. I'm just working. I, I, I would not be okay, here. Let's, let's start with that. But I, I, was, I, I was in partnership with a friend. And um, somewhere along the lines, I, I, I did not separate it completely. Right. I felt, okay, this business, we're doing this, and I could do that with my own personal time. Yeah. But I was using company email, and I well, was you using were stuff. Naughty. Yeah, you know, but it, it did not, I, I, it wasn't really clear to me. And, yeah. you know, when my partner found out, it was a bit of a, you know, a hustle yes. between both of us. And he was pretty upset. And I was a bit confused at first. I said, hey, why are you upset? But then I sat down with a few people, and they explained it to me that, see, anything having to do because i was mm -hmm. using the company email which i felt oh is the email i use but i had another email that i could have used yes. but for some reason i just felt oh yeah I'm but even if it's your email you shouldn't be using their internet you know so i think that sometimes yeah. people start it and they don't really think of it in a bad place that they're uh -huh. doing something wrong because wrong. they're in a good exactly. place about it they are, they are but I, yeah and i think one of the things that you have to be careful about is even if you're thinking of making that plan of transitioning you still your reputation is still key it, you want to live in a good important. way yeah. you want to have 
you know, them be able to recommend you. You want them to be able to speak well of you because especially the business community, it's very tiny. Exactly. Like I've left some companies 15 years later and I'm still able to talk to the CEO because mm -hmm. I left in a good in a place, good, in a regardless good place. of the fact that I was going to go and start my And own I must business. say that I actually lost money to that, that particular This was venture. just a bad scenario. No, because I, I actually, the entire business that I, I did, the company Capital took it to, and I just, I just let it go because I realized I had, you know, infringed on that. So I just kind of, okay, so if you, this is going to end this case, you just, are just, just a bad it. example. No, I, I'm, I'm okay. It was like you said. I was, in, I was in a good place. Okay. But what, what about you? Um, I mean, your thoughts. Let us know. Let's go to the streets and find out what people think. Yeah. yeah. I think for now, I'm going to stick with nine to five. Well, because I feel like it's more secured than owning your own business. For me. For now, I think it's just more secure than owning my own business for now. I don't have any plans of owning my own business anytime soon. Everybody cannot remain in a in a nine to five job because of uh, stability. When you talk of stability, sometimes it might not give you uh, opportunity to discover some other talent in you. Because by owning your own job, it gives you opportunity of relating with people, other people outside your regular job. And from relating with them, you'll be able to also gain some other experiences that can help you in uh, other aspect of life, in developing some aspect, other aspect of life too. I'd like to own my own business. I'll be free, I won't have to wake up at 6 a.m., 4 a.m. to come to work and get here before 8. If I own my own business, I'll make sure it's something that would bring steady money to me and I will not have to suffer. I am of the opinion or I belong to the school of thought which says that uh, you need to actually work for some other person before working for yourself. What I mean is that you actually need to work in a well-established organization that has all the departments in place, that conforms to international standards and, inter and best practices as regards administration. So when you actually work in such an organization, you actually understand how an organization or a business outfit is meant to be run smoothly. So you need that, as one needs that kind of experience. So for me, my school of thought is that you should work in an established organization, work under a boss, and then with time you become your own boss. Because when you set up your own company, it is how you actually learn what you have learned from others that you want to put to, to use. If you've learned something like junk, you will also actually run your organization in a junk style. But if you've actually been groomed under a standard organization, preferably in a blue chip company, and you've actually learned the process and processes and everything that is involved in running an organization, there's that certainty or let me say almost 100% assurance that when you start up your own organization, or you become an entrepreneur, start running your maybe a manufacturing outfit or a service-oriented organization. There's that certainty that you will you will do very well. I prefer owning my own business because by that you get to control your business by yourself. You get a profit, no urging around. Nobody's going to disturb you. Nobody will tell you time to go home and time to come to work. I don't think it's easy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it is. That's why I'm like, you have to make a plan. You don't just jump into it. Just because everybody's on the entrepreneurship train doesn't mean you should do it. So I just said, just take your time, make plans. Because if things may not start happening immediately, you start your own business. You may not start making money. So, uh, what, what, what I would advise somebody that is moving from a nine to five job to setting up his own business is that he or she should actually understand well how the organization is run. And you cannot understand this within a year. You cannot understand how a business is run effectively within two years, maybe five to ten years. And there is a lot of examples. There are people that are running, that are managing directors, chief executive of banks that are doing well today. It is because they actually worked in the old generation banks. They understood what banking was all about. And they didn't, they didn't understand that in two years. They worked, they rose to a, a particular position in management, senior management level, before they said, okay, let us start up our, our own banks. And they are doing so well today. 
Well, I think everybody should gather money and own their own business because it gives comfortability and satisfaction. Other than waking up early in the morning, even prone to risk and every other thing, going to a place uh, uh, with a boss, ordering you, giving you jobs and all that. So as I suspected, most people have side hustles and I think the key thing with Nigeria is that you have to, people feel like you have to have a side hustle in mm -hmm, this part. Mm -hmm. But I think that doesn't discount for the fact that entrepreneurship in Nigeria is very difficult. It's hard though. It's not for the faint hearted, nah, definitely. Nah. Like I, I can tell you a few stories. Uh, too many stories. I know, I, mean, I know. You, it's like, if you've ever read that part where Paul in the Bible was talking about, I've been shipwrecked, I've been homeless, I've been hungry. That is entrepreneurship so <laughs> in that story. Take it to church. Yeah. yeah. To so, church. but what are the do's in terms of thinking about the transition? Okay. So first of all, I think um, for a lot of people, I see one of their biggest fears are uh, the fact that um, they, they don't have a safety net. What what happens at so the like end of the month? So like having money in the bank? Yeah. So try and save if you can. But well, what you if can. you can't? Well, if you just can't. Uh, but I mean, there are other things you must think about. Um, the most important uh, um, credential or, or, or currency you must have is your integrity, you know, while you're still working. You know, there are people you will relate with, have business interactions with. You don't necessarily have to sell really, any, really, really you know. So when you've left and you tell the person, oh, I'm no more with that company, the person will still relate with you based on the integrity to which you were showing at the previous organization. And, 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 and you know, people talk. Yeah. People talk. Uh, you'll be surprised how small Lagos, Nigeria, and all Nigerians and are, how connected they are. You know, this person went to school with that person. So you don't want to do anything, you know, you know, shady. True. And I think in terms of saving, if you can't save or you don't have enough finances, then you really still need to be making a plan. And a plan is two things. It's both business and financial. I think in terms of business, you need to write out what it is you want to do. What are your objectives? And I, I always find it useful to have personal sort of targets, even within a side hustle mm -hmm. business, saying, okay, so how many um, customers do I want to have before I can think of transitioning? On your For own, example, yeah. yeah, you were saying that you could have like 16 you know, it varies per person. Exactly. But I mean, the, the thing also is that you should have some level of clientele. Have sold your product to at least a few people before you actually step out. Because, I mean, you could step out and you realize that nobody wants your product. I mean, it was fantastic in your head, but nobody actually wants to pay money for it. They might like it for free, but paying money for it is something completely different. So liking something and paying for it yeah. are two different things. So, I mean... Those are some of the things, but uh, when, when, when should one actually step out and say, this is the time I am going out on my own? I know mine is when I just cannot cut it anymore and I, I need to think about my business and, and I, just, I just can't multitask, I just move on. Mm -hmm. I know that at that point it's too much for me to handle. But there are a lot of people, I mean, from person to person it varies, right? Yeah. Um, some people it's how many customers you have, some people it's how much money is already coming in, um, some people, it's um, which newspaper wrote an article about them. Once there's an article, they just feel. And let me tell you, it's so easy to have an article written about you these days. Really? But easy. I would say that my big thing for and my general big advice with transitioning is really stay in your nine to five for as long as possible. It's really good to have the safety. You're getting experience. You're getting the salary. Um, don't be so much in a hurry to jump. But if you are certain that it's really the right thing for you, um, there's no such thing as perfect time. So I spent like six months agonizing before making that leap. And it's just because, you know, it's hard. It's an indecisive period. But I think once you've decided, there's no perfect time. So you just have to make sure that you have enough saved in the bank, you have a good plan, and you have a good idea that people are paying for. So guys, you also tell us what your thoughts are about this um, whole side of hustle thing. What are your thoughts? Um, have you done it before? You can share some of the tips and your experiences uh, particularly. Uh, you can reach me at Tunji Andrews on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Um, all of them basically same name, Tunji Andrews. You can reach him everywhere <laughs> you go. <laughs> um, but you can reach me at Honey Ogundei on Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. And uh, do not forget to also use the handle uh, at Indani TV. And don't forget the hashtag analyze this. Till next time, guys.